So, Jonathan, thanks for joining us for the third time in as many minutes. Yeah, good to be back here. I'm, 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 again, I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> it, it feels like we could have done this for months and we'd still all be in the same space anyway. Oh, look, it's really just exciting to be able to present these products to everybody. And, uh, you know, having, having three products to present here is, uh, is really fun. Hey, well, likewise, having been starved of any sort of trade show environment uh, and actually not seen really any new products, at least not in the flesh, seeing them digitally is the best we can get. And I know that the product that you've got for us today, the Cyclone, is one that I am particularly interested in because it is a development. It's the evolution, by the sounds of it, of the Mutant, which is one of my personal favorite running shoes. It's a great all-rounder. But the curious thing that you were saying about it is, in a way, this started as almost like a Mutant 2 project, but then changed and morphed and with it allowed you to do all sorts of things to it that you couldn't have done otherwise. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. It's been a fun project to work on because you know, exactly as you said, the first concept was, uh, was a replacement for the Mutant. Um, but I tell you, if um, we, we could never have pushed the shoe as far as we've pushed it now if, if, it, if it had been that replacement because of course, like any iconic product, you know, we want to, we, we still want to please the, the, the fans of the product. I've definitely um, issued threats to uh, designers over the years when they've said, oh, we're, we're making, we're updating that thing you really like. Because the problem with an update is if you know you love the existing model, an update, they might change it for the worse. <laughs> There's always that risk, isn't there? Um, I think we've been, been you know, we, We've been quite um, successful, I think, over the years of, of being able to put these new changes or updates into shoes. Uh, and then being a relatively small but adaptable company means that we can actually we can actually make these decisions. We can say, well, look, you know, this shoe is, is really an exciting concept. Um, let's let's actually keep the mutant and let's actually produce a brand new shoe and really push it to see how, how far we can take it. I guess it allows you to have your broad appeal uh, shoe and then tweak it with a more specialist offering for those maybe again like me who were fans of the original but maybe want to try something a little different so i'm excited now anyway jonathan sh show me what this shoe looks like <laughs> okay so here it is this is the this is the product this is the end, end result of, of of a lot of <laughs> a lot of different trials a lot of uh, a few errors along the way but uh, a really really fun project uh and uh I think if you put the mutant alongside the shoe, uh, you would probably even say, wow, you know, did that even start as a replacement for the mutant? Because uh, it, it's really a completely different looking shoe. Uh, the most obvious, uh, obviously, uh, example here is uh, here we're using the Boa Fit system. Uh, and so we've actually been able to collaborate quite closely with the team at Boa and actually come up with some quite really quite cool and, and innovative solutions. Um, we're not just replacing the lacing system, but actually really uh, really utilizing the benefits of, of, of what their um, of what their system can give us. That's the key, isn't it, really? is It always comes down to fit. And the lacing is such a crucial part of customizing that fit. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and uh, being comfortable in the shoe, but also being very well supported is a, you know, is, is a key element. Uh, so, you know, like you, like we sort of touched on at the beginning, you know, the, the idea was starting as a as a replacement for the mutant, and and one of the key parts of the mutant, which uh, really differentiates that shoe, is what we call the spiral tongue, and what that means is it kind of overlaps the foot, uh, one flap overlaps and there's another flap inside it, uh, and and what it gives you is is no seam lines on top of your foot, so very very comfortable down down that quite sensitive area, uh, and we've actually been able to do. You know, very much the same thing here with the cyclone. So the flaps here externally overlap the foot, uh, and we've actually got on the inside we've got no uh, we've got no seam lines that run across the top of the foot, and you've got an elasticated section here, which allows that movement that you need not only to put on the shoe but also a, a little bit of movement uh, where while the foot expands and and contracts in in the shoe. So you know, look, this is a shoe which we we know will work incredibly well over mid to long distance running. 
Uh, so you could be in this shoe for a long time, but we really wanted to really push this shoe in terms of being really special over very difficult and technical terrain. So uh, a shoe which can function on, on, on the most difficult sort of dolomite mountains and, and the most difficult fells that you have there in the UK. <laughs> I was just about to ask you where its point of difference was in terms of usage from the mutant, but you might have just answered that very question. Yeah, exactly. You know, the mutants are quite a versatile running shoe uh, and, and also, you know, relatively cushioned and, and comfortable shoe. Uh, we sort of wanted to retain that, that comfort aspect, but uh, really push it that it could really uh, be, be very a stable shoe and work really well over, over really difficult terrain. And, and it's really, you know, utilizing the, the bow fit system here where we can, we can really get a good, uh, a really strong uh, midfoot hold. And, and one, of the, one of the kind of really quite cool but interesting features which we've been, been able to sort of incorporate is uh, uh, people that use the BOA fit system before will know that um, it's, a, it's a static system. There's no give in the lacing itself. So we've got these static panels which give you that really good foothold. But here, this middle yellow panel, which you can see here on the top here, is actually uh, like a Y-shaped panel and it's elasticated down there. So what that allows you is that this panel here actually gives you that little bit of, uh, um, let's say, um, slight movement and slight elasticity, uh, which allows that the foot to expand and contract. You know, we know the foot doesn't stay the shape, same shape when you when you start the run, uh, as opposed to when you finish the run where you're all hot and sweaty. <laughs> the, the other cool thing, and this is a shoe I'm really excited for now, uh, even though I've never seen it in reality, is on the instep there. I mean, there's, there looks like very little in the way of like, again, like seams, the durability on the mutant, and actually all La Sportiva running shoes and climbing shoes has always been really high because the build quality is fantastic. And I always say it's a telling sign when you can wear a sole on a shoe out and the upper is still perfectly intact. Yeah, I think that that's, you know, maybe a little bit of a point of difference here with La Sportiva. And, you know, look, you know, we might not even have the, you know, the, the lightest shoes uh, available, but um, we, you know, just the way we test our shoes here in the Dolomite Mountains, which is really, uh, you know, quite a, a difficult and aggressive terrain, uh, we, we make sure that our shoes are, uh, are able to be durable and, and, and last for the long distances as well. Um, you know, but talking about, you know, being durable, but, you know, we're also... Um, need to also retain you know good protective elements as well so you know again here in the upper we we do include a, a, a quite a protective uh, toe guard, toe bumper here or toe guard in the shoe uh, and we and we have our, our heel counter here around the back of the shoe um, but one of the one of the other you know quite um, you know, distinctive features of this shoe is uh, here with the the gaiter area here around the around the shoe uh, so what this does it really, it's it's a very soft and and, and flexible material, and it, and it's uh, it's stretchy enough that it will will close on the ankle, uh, and it will really help to stop any debris getting inside the top of the shoe. Um, so again, that's a that's a really nice feature, which has again been an evolution of, of what we did on the mutant. It's a the, the um, that gator actually. It's a really striking shoe. When you first brought it up, it was the first thing I wanted to ask you about, but I tried to rein myself in just to ask a few other things beforehand. <laughs> yeah right you know and, and that's part of you know you know when people pick up the shoe they go wow this shoe is really different uh and i think you know as soon as we decided to go down 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 the um down the route of using the boa fit system we said well okay let's you know let's let's look at this as a as a, as a whole package uh, on the upper part of the shoe uh, and really use the system in, in the best way we can um but like i say you know those some sort of those iconic mutant features that you might not actually recognize them but they're still here and, and the gator is a part of that and the spiral tongue uh, that overlaps the foot is, is a part of that as well. Should we talk about the midsole next and maybe some numbers a little after that? <laughs> yeah, sure. So um, so again, you know, with um, with being an evolution of the mutant, we, we sort of started with a, I would say, a relatively conservative uh, midsole package. Um, but again, we've been able to push, uh, push the envelope a little bit on that. Um, so we've we've got a slightly um, a slightly less high. No, it's not the best word, but a, a less high stack height uh, at the back of the shoe, uh, and we've um, we've actually got a, a slightly higher uh, stack height at the front of the shoe. So we've sort of changed the balance of the shoe slightly, uh, and and having a little bit more protection uh, here under the under the forefoot 
uh, is really useful again over over those difficult and technical terrains. So, um, but yeah, you know, the cushioning aspect, of course, is, all, is also very important. So we, we we certainly don't want to forget about that uh, when we're when we're doing a mid and long distance shoe. So we use an injection molded uh, EVA midsole uh, for for the cyclone here. Oh, and um, and of course, you know, not quite so easy to show here on the black version, but uh, here on the women's version, uh, you can see we we do have a stability element here. Um, which again helps to guide the foot as you as you heel strike uh, in terms of uh, then moving onto um, onto the midfoot of the shoe. And moving on to the underside and the sole. Yeah, sure. Look, um, to the underside here, uh, you know, we were able to develop a completely new uh, outsole design. So that's been really, really quite uh, quite cool to do that. Uh, the mutant has been a very, very popular outsole design, especially especially in the UK, <laughs> given given wet uh, and slippery conditions. But uh, you know, some of our best feedback uh, comes from the UK, so uh, so we're we're quite happy about that. Um, but the lug height, uh, again, it's uh, it, it's it's the same as the mutant, or within half a millimeter of the mutant, uh, and uh, and the pattern here, we've just been able to. Um, adapt the uh, the shape and and the lug height uh, or the or the the lug design uh, to give the best traction over um, yeah over slippery terrain, and you'll see here on the bottom the uh, the white X sign here, that's our friction X uh, rubber mix that we use, uh, and that's our most grippiest uh, uh, grippiest rubber that gives the stickiest traction on. Know, especially important on uh, on wet rocks, you know, which is uh, which is one of the most difficult. <laughs> Tricky one as well with wet, wet rocks because of the fact that on heavily lugged shoes, obviously you have got a lower surface area as well. So you need that surface area to actually really give you the most grip you can. Yeah, and that's that's a very good point and uh, and and uh, a comment that I think uh, comes from somebody who knows <laughs> who knows what it's like to run on you know run through muddy ground and then when you hit that wooden bridge uh, you know <laughs> you have to be careful at times. So uh, compared to the mutant, for example, we've actually have increased the surface area of of the lugs, uh, and that's been able to do two things for us again. You know, to increase that uh, that surface contact patch when you're running on a, on a harder slippery surface. Um, but the other thing that we do here in the mountains is also sometimes we uh, when we're running on icy and snowy ground, uh, we can actually uh, screw in what we call our AT spikes. Uh, so we've got dedicated uh, areas here for that, and just to increase the um, you know, the the lug size here allows uh, easy um, installation of these AT spikes. Great. Is there anything else as well, Jonathan, that we should cover before we leave you here today? Yeah, sure. Uh, so let's you know maybe just dive into some numbers. Uh, you know, people people like to like to know exactly what the uh, what the dimensions of the shoe are. Hey, as uh, well, if you've spent all of this time and effort coming up with the numbers as well, you blooming want to let people know those numbers. <laughs> exactly. So uh, here we've we've got a stack height. So we'll start with the here at the front here at nineteen point five millimeters. Uh, and we go here at the back of the shoe at 26.5 millimeters. So the difference of those numbers gives the drop of seven millimeters in the shoe. And um, yeah, let's talk about... Am I right in saying that's a couple of millimeters down, isn't it? I think was it a nine mil or thereabouts for the mutant? Oh, we have 10 millimeters on the mutant actually, yeah. Yeah, so uh, the mutant actually ends up being a little bit higher at the back and a little bit lower at the front. So I think with this shoe, we've got a little bit more of a balanced shoe. And I think you know there's a kind of a bit of a sweet spot in terms of drop, uh, and especially when you're running on more difficult and technical terrain, um, it's actually quite nice to be a little bit lower to the ground on on the heel area of the shoe. So you know that was that was the reason for doing that. I'll let you dive back into the numbers anyway. <laughs> no problem. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the weight of the shoe. Uh, so in a size 42, we come in at 320 grams, and in a size 38, we are coming in at 265 grams. So um, yeah, people always 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 are keen to know about how how uh, how how much weight they're they're carrying on their feet for uh, for for running shoes, um, and yeah, um, I, I don't know if I mentioned the lug height, but it's six point five millimeters. Uh, so I can give you give you the stat on that as well. Well, these are again another one that I really hope I end up reviewing. I probably say that about. Well, actually, I've, I've, I've given Dan uh, the Ultra um, Raptor 2 mid. Uh, but yeah, the Cyclone really interests me, not least because I'm hoping to do the Bob Graham later this year, uh, which is like, you know, the classic Lake District Ultra. And these sound really 
interesting for that because that's something that has its fair share of, you know, actually quite well manicured trail on the, a lot of the tops. But then it also has its rough ground. It has its awkward terrain, and it's also got a few more technical sections where you really are on rock scrambling. So you need something that's basically going to be able to actually do a lot of things and do it for 24 hours or as quickly as you can do it. That's right. Yeah. I mean, that's such an iconic, uh, iconic round, uh, that we, you know, that, that we know about. And of course, you know, given what's happened over the last year and a half, uh, you know, the, the, um, the propensity for getting out uh, when it's possible and and running uh, running fast and and fastest known times on on these sorts of uh, these sorts of uh, rounds is, is is fantastic. So one of our last Sportiva uh, team athletes, of of, of course, uh, John Kelly, uh, was uh, was able to put together uh, three of the iconic rounds in the UK and, uh, and 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 even cycle between each of them uh, and and and. And it was uh, it was amazing to follow his progress. It was one of the most. I mean, last year was ridiculous from an FKT perspective, but that was the most, arguably the most ridiculous. It was just unbelievable, and it's interesting because from a UKC perspective, our name is obviously UK Climbing, but it's amazing how much crossover there is with our audience and that sort of ultra or fell or trail or mountain running or whatever you want to call it, um, and. I certainly know that the, um, John Kelly's the, the grand round was just one of the most unreal things I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, that's right, and I, and I think again, there's a, there's a little, exactly as you're saying, there's there's crossover between disciplines. So, you know, there are certainly uh, running races which include some aspects of it which would probably be more relevant to climbing, for example, or scrambling. So, you know, and again, you know, using using a shoe like like the Cyclone, you know, is is a, is a dedicated running shoe. But you know, with that extra stability that you and confidence that you have in the shoe and the grippiness of the outsole, you know, it, it will work on on those sorts of things like the Bob Graham. You know, exactly what you what you want to use it for. Hey, well, I'm excited to get a pair. Thanks ever so much, Jonathan. Uh, it's been a pleasure chatting to you, and hopefully now it's a well, we're filming this on a probably about 5.30 European time uh, on a Friday afternoon evening. So uh, I think it's probably time for you to clock off, go home, head out for a run or open a beer, whichever you fancy. <laughs> yeah, look, it's still light outside. So uh, yeah, maybe maybe a few miles in the, in the new cyclone would be, uh, would be the way to go. <laughs> hey, thanks ever so much, Jonathan. Oh, brilliant. Thank Good to be here. Cheers. That was absolutely spot on. And again...